welcome to Chalk Talk. I'm Chris Love, alongside Jane Mackey. A lot more teams have joined the race to help US Sailing reach its membership goal of 500 college memberships. BC is currently in the lead, but it won't take much to get your team ahead. So go to ussailing.org slash college and sign up now. It's $95 for four years US Sailing membership, and you could also get your team outfitted with Sperry Top Sider shoes. At the Dellenbaugh Women's this weekend, hosted by Brown, I kind of dropped the ball and didn't get any video. But Coach John Mollicone was kind enough to lend me these file photos so you can imagine what it would be like. The ladies saw a little bit of everything on Narragansett Bay this weekend, drizzle and current on day one, and everything from a wind delay in the morning to 10 to 16 in the afternoon on day two. Very tight racing to the end, but the Brown Bears just barely edge out Dartmouth. Despite Dartmouth freshman Deirdre Lambert's 25 points in 12 races. We've got to wonder if Dartmouth coaches Justin Assad and John Stork are thinking about moving her up to A Division soon. Brown's Emily Dellenbaugh, yes, the namesake of the event, Dellenbaugh, and Margot Elmala in A Division, and Sky Adams and Helen Lord in B Division both finished second, good enough for the Bears to take the win. Yale's Marlena Fowler and Eugenia Custo Gregg win A Division, but the Lady Eli's finished third overall. I was really fortunate this past weekend to get up to Connecticut to see the Southern New England team race, one of the most competitive team races we'll see this season. On Saturday they managed to get a full round robin, that's 12 teams. At the end of the day, Yale was in first with one loss, Hobart in second with two losses, and tied in third with three losses with Stanford and BC. On Sunday, I joined the teams as an umpire, which I've decided is definitely the best way to watch sailing. It was a great day with a top six and a bottom six completed, and at the end, it came down to the last race between Yale and Hobart. Yale managed to get the win. Charleston also had a great day with just one loss. Um, so we are sitting one race out of first, and uh, today was not quite as good, but um, uh, I think we would have been in about the same position uh, had we beat Yale in the last race. So, yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes they go, they go your way, sometimes they don't. And you just gotta, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So good to come back with a win. Um, yeah, it was good with a and uh, a nice weekend for team racing. Yeah. So you guys keep spoiling me on my predictions because you keep winning. <laughs> um, what are you what are you thinking for the rest of the season? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that we're just trying to uh, work on getting better um, one week at a time, and I think that uh, that's been our focus. Um, you know, we, we have uh, lofty goals for the end of the season, but we're not thinking about that right now. It's first about using this time to prepare and then qualifying. And thank you, Jane, for those videos and the interviews. Next to the Ferrarone team race, hosted by Roger Williams. Each team saw 20 races through double round robin and a double final four bottom four round robin. Brown comes out on top with a 17 and 3 record, followed by Stanford and Navy. And thanks to coach Amanda Callahan for the awesome photos that you're looking at. So moving over to the West Coast this past weekend, we had the St. Francis Interconference Regatta. Just looking at this regatta reminds me of 2009 National Championships. I love sailing at this venue. It's got great breeze and the current makes things really interesting. We saw that it was no different this past weekend with a battle between Hawaii and UC Santa Barbara right down to the last race, Hawaii coming out on top. Coast Guard also had a great regatta uh, winning the women's division. So Chris, does that mean I get one on the board for my prediction of Coast Guard taking the win? Absolutely not, but it does mean that we need to pay much better attention to the teams that we're not used to seeing every week at the intersectionals. Matter of fact, we need to do better on the whole. You and I get zero points this week in our predictions. And if you're at home thinking you can do better, well please leave your thoughts down in the comments section on the YouTube video. Now we turn to the rankings. We welcome back Sailing World's Meredith Pallison to help us break it down. Meredith, so happy to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me back, Chris. All right, so what do you got for us this week? Cool, well, we just tallied up the fourth rankings of the spring season, and looking at the co-ed rankings, uh, we're now seeing an almost unanimous uh, vote by the coaches uh, 
putting Yale in the first place spot. 19 out of the 20 coaches that participated in the poll voted for Yale as number one. Um, Stanford moves up to second place, which is a big jump. Uh, they were in seventh place when we last spoke. Brown rounds out the top three, and then Charleston and Georgetown are tied for fourth. And um, only seven points right now separate places two through five in the poll. So it'll be interesting to see over the next couple of weeks what happens with those uh, that close group of teams. Women's uh, votes are a little more split this week. 14 of the coaches picked Georgetown as number one. So they retain that top spot from uh, the last poll. We see Dartmouth moving up into second place and then Yale in third. In ninth place, South Florida, the last poll, South Florida was ranked 14th. Um, so they finally broke into that top 10 this week, which is cool to see. And then Boston College in 10th place. Hey, well, thanks for the update from uh, Sailing World headquarters there. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Chris. Looking ahead at the weekend, teams are going to be spread pretty thin. We've got two conference championships and three interconference regattas. But a good opportunity for some of the up and coming teams to uh, place well at a major intersectional. First up, we have the Freeze Marciano team race at Tufts and MIT this weekend. No first string Mesa team since they have their own team race championship. Next to the President's Women's Trophy at Boston University, uh, my alma mater. One of the few uh, interconference regattas hosted by BU and very tricky. If anyone's ever sailed on that side of the bridge on the Charles River, things can get pretty crazy, especially if the wind is coming from some of the tall buildings. So look out for the more experienced Charles River teams to do well here. Next up is the Buckeye at Ohio State University. This is the only interconference we're getting to be hosted in the Midwestern region in the spring. That brings us to this week's predictions. For the Freeze Marciando, I'm taking Yale to win. Over at the President's Trophy, I think the Brown women. At the Buckeye, I see Purdue is on the waiting list, and if they are able to uh, attend that regatta, I think they might have a good shot at taking it. If not, my money is on Miami of Ohio. I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to go with Ohio State, because they're at home. Um, I'm going to go with Yale Women's. They've got to win this time. They've been so close, so consistent, really hoping they can pull through. I'm not going to go with Yale for the co-ed. Uh, I don't think that they'll win both. Um, so I'm going to go with BC. And now we begin the long road to nationals. Over the next five weeks, 77 spots will be filled for the national championship semifinals and finals. If you haven't uh, been paying attention to college sailing lately or you just need to brush up, listen up. Here's how it works. College sailing has seven districts. They each stage three championships at the end of the spring season, one for women's, one for team racing, and one for co-ed. The larger districts qualify more teams for nationals, while the smaller districts qualify fewer teams. Team racing is the easy one. Fourteen teams will qualify directly from their conference championships to the ICSA APS National Championship for team racing here in Austin in June. The ICSA Gill National Championship for dinghies should be an exciting one this year. We've got 36 teams in total qualifying from their conferences to a national semifinals to be held at Navy. In the past, it's been two separate venues, 18 teams at one regatta, 18 teams at another. It's the same idea here, except they're all sharing a common ground uh, in Annapolis. The top nine from each of those semifinal regattas will then go on for the championship in Austin. The ICSA Sperry Topsider Women's National Championship is by far the most complicated. 27 teams in total qualify from their conference championships. The top team, plus two from NISA and MESA, the largest conferences, qualify directly to finals. The other 18 teams first will sail a semifinals, and that semifinal championship will be held at the venue in Austin in the days preceding the finals. Top nine go on to face the top nine from conference championships that got a bye. If it sounds a little confusing, just keep staying tuned to Chalk Talk as we fill in these charts. It'll all make sense. This week at St. Mary's College, we have the Mesa Team Race Champs. Teams will be battling for the first three berths to the ICSA APS Team Race National Championships. 
I think Georgetown still has the best shot at winning the Prosser Trophy and the Mesa Championship, but after watching what Hobart did the past couple weeks, you cannot count them out. I think they're definitely second with a threat to take first. That third spot, I think, is the most interesting. You've got St. Mary's, ODU, Navy, and possibly even SUNY Maritime. St. Mary's has the best record, but the other two have been knocking on the door, and if it blows, you can't count out SUNY. Despite this, I think St. Mary's will be able to make it happen on their home waters. Greenslade, Diaz de Leon, and Wallace, the three skippers for St. Mary's, should be prepared after taking last weekend off to train at home. The stud weekend, as they call it, is a St. Mary's tradition where they have their all-star alumni come back and train the new guys to get ready for the postseason. I think ODU has a good chance at this last spot. They've been really close on St. Mary's heels, and they've been consistently ahead of SUNY and Navy. But I can't ignore the record. I'm going to have to go with St. Mary's as well, and we're going to have to see how this one pans out. The other championship is SESA Coeds for five spots at the Gill Dinghy Nationals. SESA is one of the districts with the widest range in talent. We expect Charleston to be dominant, although we've also seen a really solid year from Miami and USF. For the last two spots, it's probably going to be Eckerd and Florida, though if Clemson sees the right conditions, they could make a run for that last spot. Jane, I'm going to have to agree with you. Charleston, USF, Miami, Eckerd, and Florida. Last week, we got to know SESA with class president Sammy Hodges. This week on Better Noah District, we're getting to know Pacific Coast Collegiate Sailing Conference. We're so pleased to be joined by the PCCSC Conference Commissioner, Danielle Richards. Danielle, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Great to be here. So, I guess we'll start off the way we kind of always do. Tell us what uh, the Pacific Conference covers in terms of geography. The Pacific Coast is all of California, all of Arizona, even though we only have Arizona State, and all of Hawaii. We technically cover parts of Nevada, but we haven't had a team from Nevada since the mid-70s. There's only about 18 teams active for these days. We've been hovering around that number. Um, so we just saw this past weekend the St. Francis Intersectional, a good chance to see, um, excuse me, interconference, they call it now, um, a good chance to see a lot of the talent from around the district. Who are some of the top schools and, and top sailors uh, in your district right now? Well, this event wasn't the most telling because Stanford didn't have their normal A team. They were back east, but big breeze that always lets Hawaii stretch their legs, and they do quite well. Um, Adam Pokras, I think he's going to be a sophomore these days. He had a great standing in the A-Fleet. Um, Santa Barbara is always a powerhouse. Nick Kashak, he's a senior. He was also doing well in A-Fleet. And then after that, it's kind of a wild card. Uh, USC is usually pretty strong. UC Berkeley has a really good team this year. They have a couple upperclassmen who are doing well. And after that, it... It's hit and miss depending on the breeze. If it's light, you'll see you see Irvine, you see San Diego doing okay, and in the breeze, the bigger teams do well. And you mentioned that um, some of your schools are, are smaller programs, some of them are community colleges. Um, I can't imagine that they all have a fleet of 18 FJs. How does, how does that work out there? Uh, Stanford's the only team that actually owns a fleet of 18. USC has about 12 boats, as does Santa Barbara and Hawaii, but we travel and take our boats with us. So most events are bring your own boat. Um, we rotate boats only at four events a year. Other than that, everyone sails their own boat for the whole event. We rotate A and B division still, and it, it's just our way of coping without having large fleets everywhere else. Um, we still try and do social events in the evening, you know, at the host school, do a barbecue, or everyone will meet up somewhere. You know, we're still a very social conference. We try and, you know, if a team needs an extra boat for JV, we're very good about bringing extra boats to make sure everyone can sail. Junior varsity, that's something that doesn't exist in other conferences as well. What, um, well, not all the conferences, what exactly is that? So instead of having four different regattas on a weekend where we send a school to Stanford or we send a school to USC, we send everyone to the same venue. 
and you're allowed to have a co-ed varsity, a co or a women's varsity, and then you can bring as many JV teams as you want. So if you were to uh, be the spokesman for the uh, for the conference and, and try to pitch to a potential college sailor, what would you uh, what would you say to entice him to come to the Pacific Coast Conference? You know. Like I said before, you, we've got great sailing where everyone's at the same venue every weekend, so you get to see all of your buddies. Um, I don't know where else in the country you can surf in the morning, have practice in the afternoon, and go skiing on the same day, but you can do that at several of our schools. Um, Any time where you have conference championships in Hawaii is a good thing. <laughs> you know, we don't shovel snow. And, uh, you know, sailing at St. Francis is just pretty magical experience when you're at St. Francis and it's blown 25 and you're doing starboard roundings. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time and for the insight into PCCSC. Anytime, Chris. Thanks. It's time for this week's U.S. Sailing College Sailor of the Week. For co-ed, we have Hawaii's Adam Pokris and Sienna Patmount. These two had an outstanding St. Francis Regatta, in which they not only won A Division, but virtually clinched their team's win by taking the bullet in the last A race. They sailed really well in big conditions on the city front. This weekend we also have a women's honoree. For the second time this season, it's Deirdre Lambert, freshman from Dartmouth, sailing with Carissa Crawford and Catherine O'Sullivan. Absolute domination from this talented freshman skipper, scoring an average of 2.1 points per race and blowing her next nearest competitor away. In 12 races, she never sailed a set in which she didn't win at least one of the races. Next week, we look ahead to the Super Tuesday of co-ed semifinals qualifiers. It's actually a Saturday-Sunday regatta, but you, you get the picture. The Mid-Atlantic, the Midwest, the Southeast, and New England districts are set to fill a combined 25 out of the 36 spots. The Pacific Coast and SESA are sailing their team race champs. Join us next week on Chalk Talk.